Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's Dave Weiner here. It's Friday, November 4th. I'm going to try something today. Uh, I want to try to sort of fill in some of the blanks for people who are using 1999.io um, by showing you how to add images to a post and how to, you know, sort of make the post look, um, look good in when you post it to Facebook and when you post it to Twitter. So what I've done is I've set up a little test post here because people pretty much seem to have figured out how to edit a blog post, how to create one and how to edit it. That doesn't seem to be a problem. Um, but how do you add those images? Um, and uh, the way I do them, it, the way the software does them is it puts them in the right margin. And so I'm using a Mac and I'm assuming that you also are using a Mac. Uh, if not, then you have to find another paint program to do what you want it to do. So the paint program that I use is um, called Preview. And it's, it's a funny uh, piece of software because it's the PDF viewer uh, app, but it also actually is a very simple, easy to use uh, paint program, graphics program. So here I have a image of obviously a telephone um, in, I've already put it in here, you know, I don't need to show you how to do a copy and a paste. Actually, um, you just do a, uh, what's the command? You can't see it there. Uh, it's new from clipboard. It's the first command of the file menu. So you get the graphic on your clipboard and um, you do new from clipboard. By the way, I should have said up front, I don't have a script for this. <laughs> I'm just sort of doing the kind of demo I, I would do if you were like sitting here with me and I was just showing you how it works. So it's going to be rough and I'm probably going to hit some rough spots and I'm going to go a lot longer than um, I need to. So anyway, so the first thing you have to do is click on this toolbox icon and it says show the markup tool. They haven't kept the prompts up to date here and uh, because it's doing a lot more than a markup toolbar, I think. I don't know what a markup toolbar is exactly. And now what I want to do is, you see these white spots here? That's not good. There's the ability to have a, a image has the ability to be transparent in these spots, which means it picks up whatever color is in the background. So if your page is sort of a light gray, this area will be a light gray. So this is the tool, it's right here, and it's called Instant Alpha, again, weird. I think of it as a transparency tool. Um, and so what you do is you click on the tool and then you point at the place, the, at a region that you want to be transparent. You click and you do a little drag and you can see it sort of figures it out. And you drag until it's pretty much run out of places to get, right? And so it's, it's sort of picked out a region there and you go like that, okay? So now you see I've got this nice selection and then you hit the delete key. Boom. Now it's in, now it's transparent. Or it's alpha, whatever that means. And then you do it again for the regions that you can reach. And if they're too small, then nobody's going to notice it. <laughs> Let's just be clear about that. It's like perfection we do not need. Blogging is not about perfection. So now I've got the picture the way I want it. And I'm going to save it. So let's call this a phone. And I have a special tool that's watching this images folder. You have to figure out how to get it uploaded somewhere. That's not something that 1999 can do for you. Um, and so, yeah, so I've got the file name. Press return. And now I need to bring my tool to, to the front. This is the OPML editor. I have a little script running in the OPML editor that watches that folder. And when it finds an image in that folder, it uploads it and it gives me the URL of it. It also gives me the HTML text for it. Okay. So now let's bring the browser back to the front. So here's my post. So now I have the, the I copied the URL of that image to the clipboard. And now what I'm going to do is go into the drop down menu for the post. I'm going to choose set image. And I'm going to paste the URL in. And I'm going to click. And there it is. And you see how there's no white space around it like that? 
And that's what, I mean, that's what you want, right? That's what I want. Let's go see what it looks like over in there. See? It's just in the right margin. Okay, so let's go back to the blog or to the editor. And there's one more thing I want to show you how to do. So that's one kind of image. Now there's another kind of image that we have, and I know this is confusing. I know I have a friend, one friend who I, I can totally tell he's confused by this. That's what got me going on doing this little video. Um, and so here, here's the next place we have an image. I'm going to show it to you beforehand. So you pull, you pull down the menu, and we choose Set Metadata. So why is this called Set Metadata? Uh, because, well, I'm going to, I have another place to set a title, <laughs> as if I, as one wasn't enough, I have to have two, uh, and you do, actually, It'll turn, I'll explain why, and then there's a place to enter the URL of an image and a description. Now, this is what's going to show up when you paste a link to this post into Twitter or Facebook. They're looking for this metadata in your post. Um, to figure out how to display it. So when I have a post that shows up over in Facebook, it looks really beautiful. Um, I'll see if I can get one up here at the end to show to you. Uh, um, this one, I'm not going to be able to get this one into Facebook because it's on... Um, Facebook won't be able to get access to this uh, because it's, in a, it's behind my firewall, basically. You can't get in. That's the... That's why we have firewalls. Um, this is just a test server that I work with. So my goal for this is to get a URL of a beautiful image on the top of the page that will go into uh, that will go into Facebook and Twitter. Okay. I also have another capability just in my own site where that image is also displayed at the top of the page. Um, that's why I just sort of said that, and I shouldn't have. Okay, so I'm going to cancel this now. I'm going to go back into, well, I'm going to go to, uh, t -t -t -t, where am I going to go? I'm going to go to Google Image Search. And this is how I get a lot of my images. So what I was looking for, let's move this over a little bit so you can see. I decided that I wanted a picture of a, a rocket launching, okay? And so what I do is I go into Google Image Search. How do you get there? I'll show you. So you go, well, now I'm at the Google homepage, and I go rocket launch, right? And press return, and it, sh it shows me a bunch of web pages with rocket launching on it. But what I want are the images, so I just click on images, right? And more specifically, I want ones that I'm allowed to reuse. So I click on search tools and usage rights labeled for reuse. So this usually means that it's got a Creative Commons license. So here's one from Pixabay, and Pic here's another one. Here's This is from, I think it's Pexels, Pixels or whatever. My vision isn't that good on these little tiny bits of text. Uh, usually there's one from Wikipedia, but not here, no Wikipedia. But I love this image. This would be a great image at the top. So what I'm gonna do is, click on it and then click view image and you know you can see it's got a ton of pixels too many pixels far too many pixels for this purposes just simply not needed that many pixels uh, let's see we're gonna get there there's a scroll bar. you can see how detailed this is I mean you can go one or two ways you could sort of select a, a, a more specific range of the picture and that you would do just by uh, a screen grab or I could just say I want the whole thing so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna say copy image so that puts it on the clipboard and then I go over into the preview program and, uh, and you can't see me do this I'm gonna go new from clipboard and boom there's the <laughs> And we're gonna fix this right away. It's too it's way too big. It's it's beautiful to have all those pixels if like you're producing a magazine, but for the web, you this is this will just make the page slow and it's ridiculous. You don't need it. Um, so again, you click on the toolbox, and now here's another 
little thing in the icon, another very useful tool. And this one has a good label. It says adjust the size. So I click on that. Let's move this over. And so I find that a good size for an image for both Twitter and Facebook is 800 pixels wide. I don't know why. Just a good number. You can go 900, you can go 1,000, 700, 600, all in that. That's all good. That's a good range. But 3,000, way too much. So let's go for 800 pixels. And it automatically adjusts uh, to the height to 535 to keep it proportional. Very nice, right? This is what we like. And then it tells us that the resulting size will be 26.7% of the original, and it'll be 720K. And the other one, you see 7 megabytes. It's so totally too much. And so I click OK. And let me move the window up so you can see. It's, it is really weird the way it does this because uh, the image is actually... It, that's not 800 pixels, okay? That's less. It's showing us less, but that's okay. We forgive them. It's got this software, like all good software, it has bugs, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Hard to say. So then I'm going to do a save again. And um, I'm going to call this one Rocket. And as before, my little script over there in the OPML editor is, hasn't noticed it yet. Knock, knock. Hello. I have, my friends are waiting. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I found it. And again, I put the HTML on the clipboard. I select the URL. Copy. So now it's on the clipboard. I go back into the browser. I go to my blog post right here. Scroll down a little bit. And then I choose set metadata and I paste the image in here and I'm just going to add a little test a little description here this is a small test post for my friends who use 1899.io for their blogs and I click OK and now there's another little, this is ridiculous. This was not needed to be in this dialog, but uh, my, my software sucks too. And I didn't want to make this a big feature. But if you want to allow comments in your post, just click that box and you, you're now going to get comments. So um, discuss comments. I don't want comments on this post, so I'm going to click OK. And now I can go over here and let's see how it looks. And lo and behold, there's the rocket. Move the window, we'll move it across a little bit so you can see better. Yeah. And you see the descriptions there. And if you look at any of my posts on Twitter or Facebook, oh, okay, what the hell, let's go get you one. So you can, so you don't have to believe me, I can actually show you. Let's go to Twitter. And oh, I wanted to get all the politics out of this, but then you can see I, who I'm voting for. Sorry, Trump supporters. Uh, show me one of my own posts, please. Hello. I, I point to everybody else. There, that's one of mine. So you can see that's the description. If I don't enter a title into the metadata post, it just picks the title up from the post. It's a way of overriding the title. If you want a different title to appear in Twitter or Facebook, that's what you do. That's where you put that title. And in this case, I used an image. This came from Wikipedia of two dinosaurs fighting, which was and a little baby dinosaur down here. <laughs> See, which sort of, I guess I was making a little editorial comment uh, about Microsoft interrupting with Slack. I don't expect they will. I, I, I think the old Microsoft would have. I think the new Microsoft is kind of a dinosaur, even though they would like you to believe that they're not. They are. Um, okay, well, there you go. Uh, I believe that's the demo. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm going to post this on Facebook. I'm going to post it on uh, Twitter. And I'm probably also going to post it on some blog somewhere. So just look around, you'll find a place to ask a question or ask it on the 1999 user mail list. So this is going to be a very long video. Let's see how bad it is. Uh, 
it's hard to say. 15 minutes. Well, that sucks. <laughs> okay. Well, everybody, thank you so much for listening. I think this is going to help some people, so that's good. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.